A um, couple basic things we're covering. We're trying to learn a few different techniques to implement the baton into your control techniques. Um, one thing I've always thought, and I've always seen a lot of excessive use of force complaints come out of batons, out of strikes. One of the biggest reasons is because your department seem to think that it looks very aggressive. Uh, many times you don't have good control over where you're using your strikes, where you're landing your strikes. Many times a person moves, you wind up having incidental contact to the head. A lot of times those things are going to be somewhat unavoidable. Many times also people don't understand that the ASP baton and any, of, any one of its counterparts, whether it be friction lock or, or uh, bearing lock, they're not designed to do significant amounts of damage. You can look at it, basically it's a reverse engineered bat. If you look at it, it's being used with the smaller side down. It doesn't develop a lot of kinetic energy. And many times when recruits use it or police officers use it, they don't realize it's just not going to have the effect that they're thinking that it's going to have. The magical effect being strike once to the leg, the guy falls, oh, it's a perfect world, everything works, okay? I, it doesn't work that way. I've found that many times thinking outside the box, um, I've found that most of its uses are far better using it for things that it wasn't initially designed for. When you start talking about blending Brazilian Jiu Jitsu tactics with law enforcement, these are things that I've found that work very, very well. Uh, many times, and in some more, most recent videos I've seen, we see officers striking down subjects. You see it all the time. You see them in a position where they're down on their back. Um, these officers are trying to stand point, please. These officers are trying to um, deliver strikes to the legs. They really don't know where to go from this point, and they really have nothing they can do with this. Instead of making it uh, more of a controlled implement or a submission-based implement, they're still using it for strikes, and it's not having the effect that they thought it was going to have. One of the best submissions and the best control positions that a law enforcement officer really could use is going to be like a straight ankle lock uh, or a heel hook type position. I've learned that this is an extremely good tool for using that. If we can teach officers how to lead in sort of like an MMA approach to avoid getting up kicked or kicked in the face, we can lead in with the knee. If we have the baton in this hand or this hand, it just really doesn't matter which way we go with it. If I put it in my back hand for power's sake, as I lead in, I'm blocking these, these kicks, these up kicks, these punches. I just slide down, I grab, sit. Okay, now I've got the baton behind, burying deep into the calf. I'm pinching very tight. I've got a nice angle on the leg, which would be normal for any heel hook, I would re or a uh, straight ankle lock, I'd reach under, okay? But right here, for purposes of the submission, I've got it in a multitude of ways. I keep my arm over the top of the instep of the foot. I hold. This foot comes deep, ensuring that he doesn't sit up, and I bury it into the back for the pain compliance. Okay. If I don't want to stay up high on the calf, I want to get farther, I can go farther down. I can get even more torque on him, and I can finish it that way. Okay. If he has very limber ankles, um, he's not as susceptible to the pain compliance technique from right here. There's many ways I can do this. I can transition over to more power-based submission. If his foot like, feels like it's starting to slide out, I don't want to let it all the way out, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide my hand up underneath. Okay. If you can, come in close on the angle here. The bar is across my belly. It's across my abdomen. I'm going to go underneath now. And you can see he's already raising up. It's prying against my hip. So every amount of torque I put on this is in the back of his Achilles tendon. Okay, I don't even have to hold right here. It's, it's buried into this. I'm going to go underneath, roll. I'm going to X grip and bury into this guy for as much torque as I, as I physically want to put on that. Okay, So I can continue on with it this way. If I'm able to finish it or I can just continue to hold this guy at this point, I can do that if I need to let him go or if he manages to slip his foot. As the foot slips out, once it slips out, he may push it across the body. If he does, we're in a standard heel hook position at this point. I'm, I'm still leaving the bar under. I'm going to pull the hand over now this foot. I'm going to go under this way and I'm going to grab, pry against. For the submission okay all I did was as the foot transitioned over 
I shoot the hand at a 45 over the instep. I now go under more of a Kimura lock or a hammer lock and I pry against it and he's tapped. Okay. So again, I can go front hand too. It does not matter. Leading in, I shoot, grab, sit back. Okay. Arch for the submission or shoot up underneath and go ahead and finish that way. Okay. If he slips, goes across, I keep it there. I shoot out for the heel hook position now and I'm getting the tap that way. So it's more or less a few ways to use the baton in more of an outside the box type maneuver. Um, got many different ways of using this, this being just one where you're using it um, to help you finish uh, pain compliance techniques such as joint locks or whatever. It tends to not have so much pressure on the joint as much as it, it just causes more pain compliance and that's going to be good for law enforcement.